Chairman, sir, you are invited. Justice Tanko Supreme Court must answer are one, the Supreme Court, in a host of cases, the latest and most celebrated being Atiku versus Buhari and Co., consistently decided that for a petitioner to succeed in an allegation of infraction of any provision of the Electoral Act especially one complaining about my practices, as in this case, wrongful exclusion of votes. The petitioner must call witness, witnesses polling unit by polling unit. The question is, how many witnesses did Uzodima APC call for the 388 polling units from where the Supreme Court allocated votes to him. The so-called results from the 388 polling units were rightfully rejected in line with several decisions of the Supreme Court by the Tribunal and Court of Appeal as it was merely dumped on the Tribunal in the Ghana must go back. 
by a policeman who had no mandate of the police to testify at the tribunal. The tribunal did not even open the Ghana must go back as there was no basis to do so. It is one of the greatest wonders of the world how the Supreme Court opened the bag, counted the result, and added them to only the APC candidates. What is more perplexing is the fact that INET produced a schedule of reasons why results were not produced from the 388 units. Indeed, election did not even take place in most of the units for one reason or the other, like violence, etc., etc. And so no result could possibly be obtained from those units. No, no, the results were not merely rejected or cancelled by INEC. None of the candidates or their counsel, except perhaps APC, as we speak, are aware of the number of votes score, scored by each party from the 388 polling units. The tribunal or court of appeal did not mention or ascribe any figure from the unit to any party in their decision. In fact, in the cross-examination of the APC candidate, Senator Hope, who was the man, he could not read any figure from the Oluwale results. He said that the figures were not clear. And so it beats our imagination where the Supreme Court conjured and manufactured the figure it used in declaring Uzodema APC as duly elected. But the law is settled as decided by the Supreme Court in Buhari versus Einek in 2008. That weight can hardly be attached to a document tendered in evidence by a witness who cannot or who is not in a position to answer questions on the document. One of such persons, the law identified as the one who did not make the document. Such a person is adjudged in the eyes of the law as ignorant of the contents of the document. Two, does the Supreme Court have powers to formulate and allocate votes as election results? This is the question. Three, where the said results satisfied by INEC as required by law? Four, did Hope Uzodima call the 388 witness from the 388 polling units to speak to the result to obviate the principle of dumping which the Supreme Court had used against the PDP and our candidates. Atiku Ababaka in the last presidential appeal. Five, where the presiding officers and all party agents of the 388 polling units called to testify by Uzodima APC who were the petitioners. Six, what are the figures from each of these various 388 polling units generated and allocated to Hope Uzodima APC by the Supreme Court? Seven, is the Supreme Court saying that all the votes from the alleged 388 polling units were for the APC alone? in an election that was contested by over 70 candidates. Eight, 
it is on record that the vote analysis from the IMO governorship election as at March 11, 2019, when the results were declared were as follows. Total accredited votes, 823,743. Total valid votes, 739,485 votes. Council votes, 25,130. Total valid votes, 714,355. But at the Supreme Court, the total valid votes have increased to 950,952. And this can be corrected. This accounts for 127,209 votes in excess of a total accredited vote. We were confirmed by two concurrent judgments of both the Tribunal and the Court of Appeal. And in the tradition is that the Supreme Court hardly tamper with such decision except it was found to be perverse. What was the evidence of the perversity? It is important to also bring to the consciousness of well-meaning members of the public, especially the press, particularly Nigerians, that there were two elections in March, on March 9, 2019, namely governorship and the House of Assembly. As already known, there was only one accreditation for the two elections. The APC did not win any of the 27 seats in the Imo State House of Assembly, which were won as follows. PDP won 13 seats. AA won 8. ABGA won 6. APC 0. Total 27. The above, fig, fig, uh, above further question and confront the rationale for the judgment of the Supreme Court on Imo State. How then did the Supreme Court arrive? at this decision to allocate results to avoid a lawful governorship election and impose an elected person as a governor. The fact is that the Supreme Court, as presently constituted under Justice Tanko, has lost its credibility and no longer commands the respect and confidence of Nigerians. If the people no longer impose confidence in the Supreme Court, then our democracy, national cohesion, and stability are at a great risk. The constitution of the panel that had the appeal itself was a product of drama. The panel was changed three times, and any judge that shows signs of not agreeing to modern democracy in this case was promptly removed by the CGN. The result had to be ominous to satisfy the script of rationality. But can any judge who sat on that panel go home and sleep well? Can any judge who sat on that panel face his creator and swear that impartial justice was done, we think we had we think not. We had intelligence before the verdict on the Imo governorship that the hierarchy of APC had decided that they must use the Supreme Court to capture the states won and controlled by the PDP, such as Imo, Sokoto, Bauchi, Adamawa, 
and Benue. Can the PDP rightly trust the impartiality and independence of the panel headed by Justice Tanko Mohammed, the CGN, to adjudicate on the remaining case, cases involving the PDP, like Kano, Sokoto, Benue, Bauchi, Adamawa, and Plateau, and others. Is the same fate awaiting the governors of these states that are controlled by the PDP and other states like Kano, where the PDP clearly won and was wrong? Should Justice Tanko, Mohammed, and his colleagues on the Imo governorship panel not rescue themselves from the remaining cases involving PDP? The PDP firmly holds that if the flat judgment of the Supreme Court on Imo governorship election is allowed to stand, it will be a recipe for anarchy, chaos, and constitutional crisis, not only in Imo, but the entire country. Our party has it in good authority that Justice Tanko and his panel are working on instruction from certain forces in the presidency to use the Supreme Court to take over states lawfully won by the PDP and award them to APC. The PDP, therefore, advises Justice Tanko not to allow himself to be used to push our nation to the path of anarchy and constitutional crisis. As any further attempt to subvert the justice in the pending petitions in Sokoto, Bauchi, Benue, Adamawa, as well as Kano and Plateau states, will be firmly and vehemently resisted. The country belongs to all. There is no person that is super or more Nigerians than the others. The truth must be told. In order to avoid an eminent breakdown of law and order, which we seek, the PDP demands that Justice Tanko Mohammed immediately step down as CGN and chairman of the National Judicial Council, as Nigerians have lost confidence in him and a Supreme Court under his leadership. Justice Tanko must not aid the panel to determine the remaining election petition before the Supreme Court. A final issue to be noted is that it is in the public record that Justice Kudarat Tekereku Okun has been the consistent instrument used by anti-democratic agents resident in Lagos from where she was elevated to the bench of the Supreme Court to deliver the last three of the most doubtful and controversial judgment which removed PDP governors and other elected officials. These judgments are one, Paul Lupo versus Leigh Imoke, where Leigh Imoke was removed in a very suspicious circumstances in 2007 when she was at the Court of Appeal. Two, Adeleke versus Ayatola, delivered in 2019, which annoyed the election of Adeleke by the Oshun people. And now, three, Uzodima versus Inhedio, delivered on January 15, 2020, which removed Inhedio of the PDP, who won the election with 276 votes, 494 votes, and replaced with Uzodima of the APC, who came forth in the election with a party some a party number 96,458 votes. These cannot be more mere coincidences. In 
In conclusion, gentlemen of the press, in the light of extraordinary circumstances that they shared this, that judgment as a product of manipulation and a clear coup d'etat against the will of the people of Imo State, we demand that the decision of the Supreme Court on the Imo governorship election be reviewed and reversed in the interest of justice. Furthermore, we demand that Justice Tanko Mohammed, the CGN and his colleagues on the Imo governorship panel, rescue themselves from the remaining cases involving PDP in the Supreme Court. Finally, we state for the record that the Supreme Court order under Justice Tanko Mohammed should be held responsible if there is any breakdown of law and order in any state as a result of judgment procured solely for political, for political rather judicial reasons as is currently happening. Gentlemen of the press, we wish all of you well. Okay.